Greetings, bookworms, and welcome to the Bearded Book Club's production of Sky Zen by Mark Gregson. If you want to follow along in this and all of our productions, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all new videos as well as when we do our live shows. If you would like to support Beard Book Club, you could do so in two ways, both of which are listed in this video's description. Number one, you can become a member of the YouTube channel and or become a patron and support us on a regular basis. Or number two, you can go to our Amazon wish list and send us a book as a one-time donation. So without further ado, let us continue. Chapter 20 I must fly to keep us alive, must focus or we're all dead. The Gorgantan's tail snaps towards us, razor's edge rushing to slice the Gladian in half. My arms jerk to the right and we swerve. The female's tail whooshes by, narrowly missing our hull. The Gladian shudders as the beast flies past. Her roar vibrates the helm bubble. After she twists back towards us, I shove my hands forward. The strings resist. My arms shake. I'm just so exhausted. She screeches in frustration. Harpoons ricochet off her face and eyes. The crew operates with mad ferocity. No one's worried about Pound solidifying as captain. If we don't take this beast down, she'll lead us whole. The beast coils her tail inward, winding it into her body. Death launch, Bryce shouts. Move, Pound yells. Move, Swabby. My muscles scream as I throw the strings forward. Chest burns, shoulders on fire. Ten minutes of intense battle has me ready to collapse. The Regantan screeches again. Eldon covers his ears. Elise, Pound bellows. The beast launches, shooting forward toward us with horrible velocity, hunger and rage in her eyes. Bryce races for the stern, becoming a tiny figure before the black mouth of the approaching beast. After peering down the barrel of her flat cannon, she fires. The canister twists in the air, bounces off the beast's face, and erupts. The explosion sparks the air with blobs of glittering heat. But the beast shoots through the flak, unhurt, just angrier than ever. How are we supposed to stop one of these things? The beast maw widens over our stern. Elise, Pound cries. Stop shouting, I roar. I'm trying. I shove downward and we plummet. The gladian descends so fast, some of the crew tip over. Pound rolls onto one of the fishing nets. He starts yelling again. Finally, once we put a little distance between us and the beast, I pull back. My biceps sting and my heart feels like it, it'll burst. The Gorgantan shoots after us again. She's relentless. The beast nears, and with whatever energy I can muster, I pull us just over the beast's mouth. We glide right over her snapping snout, but her back spines grind through the hull. Metal screeches. The whole ship rocks. Only the strings keep me from flying off the tile. I push off before more of the hull gets peeled away. As we put distance between us and the beast, my body wavers. My breathing labors. Darkness creeps in the edge of my vision. If I pass out, we're all dead. Soon I'm carefully navigating us through the beast's numerous loops, then we lift above the monster. Her undulating body shines under the sun. A little green slip hides behind the short crest of her head. It's a bubble of green skin in the only external view of the enormous gas sack that keeps her afloat. Never destroy the gas sack, Madeleine de Beaumont taught us. It would be the equivalent of exploding an elk. We and Hunter respect the lives we take, and we use everything. There's the sack, Pounds points excitedly. Fire! Sebastian, Eldon, Bryce, and Pound target the sack. Their harpoons, like spears, blast from their launchers. The sharp points aim to puncture. As the harpoons fly, the crew waits, breathless, but at the... Last moment, the beast's head rears back and the harpoons clang against her chest. Everyone groans. The Gorgantan turns towards us. Roderick, Pound bellows, the claw gun. Roderick glances at me. But sir, we'll... now. Roderick, seated behind the bow, rotates the turret. The crew runs to the stern and clasps the railings. The Gorgantan never... or nears with metal teeth bared. Roderick peers through the reticule and fires the triple hook. It's just a whisper in the air. The chain chases the hook. Then after a satisfying shunk, the hook punctures the beast's ribs. 
It sticks between two scales, and white blood gushes from the shrieking monster. The chains tighten. My eyes widen. I set my feet and brace myself. Hold on, Bryce yells. After a sudden lurch, the Gorgantin jerks us along. The whole ship thrashes as she bellows. Her scales shudder, starting a clicking wave from crest to tail. Everyone shouts. Sebastian flops around. But Pound stands, thick hands holding the railing, and laughs. The beast scales pop up and down like flippers, a defensive mechanism meant to detach the biting jaws of other Gorgantins. Another wave of scales comes, trying to remove the hook. Roderick Pound roars, do it! Roderick mashes the button, and in a blink we're reeling towards the beast at an unbelievable speed. The crew tumbles into the nets. Only the strings keep me upright. Our bow approaches the beast like the point of a sword, ready to skewer. As her scales grow huge in my vision, I shut my eyes. We slam into her. My fingers slip from the rings and I crash into the glass of the bubble. My vision becomes full of lights, faintly hear people screaming in the crushing of metal. When my head rises, I find our bow bent, all jagged and mangled. The railing is destroyed. Roderick's forehead bleeds, maybe from smacking the controls. When I was tossed off the tile, the helm bubble slid away and I dropped to the deck. The humid air touches my skin as I lie on my back, bod body stinging. Gargantin blood, like milk, wets our deck, but as I sit up, the blood dribbles from the claw gun penetration wound. The bow failed to cut into the beast. Roderick bashes a button, detaching the hook. The Gargantin turns on us, giant golden eyes burning fear into me. But we have a backup plan. Keaton's lifeboat bursts from the clouds on the right. She aims a cannon from the boat's edge, and while the beasts focus on us, she fires at the exposed gas sack. The tiny canister spins. My heart stops. Everything stops as the metal cylinder whistles through the air just before connecting. The gorgantin dips and the canister explodes harmlessly in the distance. An ice spider climbs my back. We're dead. Pound killed us with his idiotic plan, and he knows it. He becomes still, no longer barking orders. The Gorgantin veers off from us and focuses on the minuscule lifeboat. Keaton, get out of there! Roderick waves his hands over his head. Fly, Keaton, fly! But all her lifeboat uses is sails. It doesn't have a crystal engine to send it screaming into the sky. The Gorgantin hisses, winds its tail, and launches like a javelin. A cold emptiness floods me. Can't see Keaton's face. Can't hear her screams. Can't do anything for her. Keaton frantically loads another canister into the cannon. Roderick leaps off the turret and steals a launcher. He fires desperately, but his harpoon goes just over the silver scales. Everyone stops. Keaton shoots the last canister into the beast's face. The explosion would have cracked our hull. Its heat waves over us, still the enraged beast hardly notices. She chomps on the lifeboat, shredding the wood. Keaton, Roderick gasps. Keaton, no! Before the lifeboat disappears, Keaton leaps into the air. Her arms flail as she falls. Bryce shouts. Roderick stares in horror. Everyone else stands in shock, watching her drop, unsure what to do. But I have a plan. Get us out of here, Pound yells. I climb up to the platform and hop onto the tile. The gladian comes to life. The helm bubble slides over me. I flex my middle fingers and we tip forward. Then just as the beat... Beast launches towards us, I throw my hands forward. The Gorgantin misses us by inches. What are you doing, Pound shouts? Retreat, Swabby! My fingers flex. Beads of sweat course my forehead. I pull my right arm back, rotating us towards our target. Then I shove again. If I miscalculate, we'll shoot past her and never get back in time. Roderick catches my eyes, understands my thinking. He dashes to the middle of the deck, his mag boots holding him down despite the fierce winds. Yes, Pound says. Save her, save her, Elise. Once we're beneath Keaton's plummeting body, I pull back. The strings steady me, but Roderick topples and slides away. No, he cries. Keaton tumbles, ready to become a splatter on our deck. I start a descent to match her fall, but we're not dropping fast enough. 
so I leap from the tile. The bubble lowers and our momentum keeps us sinking. I hurtle off the platform and run, legs throbbing from the magnets, and dive to catch her. Keaton smashes into me. Wham! My head bangs the metal deck and my vision spins. Arms might have snapped. May have broken another rib, too. Eldon rushes past us and hops onto the tile. As the Gorgantin roars, falling behind, the shocked crew assembles around Keaton and me. Sebastian stares at me like I'm a strange insect. Pound blinks, confused and worried. Then everything turns black.